Well, I'm doing some experimentation. Um, get my lighting up spot here. I just finished a video showing how to get rid of the surge by taking the carburetor apart, rebuilding it, cleaning, cleaning everything really well, and how to manipulate this main jet so you can get rid of the surge. So I got to thinking about well, can I do can I accomplish the same thing without taking the carburetor off? Let me back up a little bit. This is sort of like a fixed jet carburetor. It really has no adjustment on it, but it, in a way it does. And I didn't know this until I thoroughly took it apart and understood its operation. Because, you know, we got this, this little lever here that, uh, you know, and it tells you up inside, was it, uh, I guess, yeah, five, yeah, from zero to 10,000 feet elevation. That's what it's got up in there. And so you, you can adjust your fuel mixture slightly, ever so slightly. That's not much. But uh, after I took this apart, I discovered that this is actually the main jet. It, the only difference is it's fixed in a position where you can't really adjust it, but ever just a quarter of a turn. So I got to thinking, well, okay, how could I fix this so that maybe someone who's out there has got a surgeon carburetor and they don't feel comfortable taking the carburetor apart and going all through that. Because a lot of times, we, when the fuel evaporates, it leaves behind a varnish. And that varnish makes every hole and orifice just a little bit smaller. And that's all it takes. And you'll start running lean and you'll get a surge. So maybe you're up right now your own anise surgeon giving you trouble. And you might be able to manipulate the choke right here and you'll notice it runs perfect. But as soon as you let off, it starts surging again. It just can't get enough fuel. Well, if we can remove this cap and give that screw like one full turn, your surgeon should go away. It's going to give you just a little bit more fuel that you're looking for. So I'm trying to figure out a way. I'm using my our engine here is not surgeon, so I'm going to be the guinea pig and try to figure out if I can get this off without removing the carburetor. So um, here's my experiment. I'm first. I'm going to drain the fuel out of the bowl. A little, little cup here. I'm gonna turn the screw. I'm trying to do this one handed. I may have to go, go get me a tripod or something in a minute. Let's see here. We'll see how much fuel we get out of it. It hasn't been started for a while. Let's see how much it holds. And this is another good test too, if you um to, to determine if your fuel pump has failed or not. If you're really getting fuel. I got another video on that where if, if you if the if the engine intermittently dies on you just going down the road and it stops but if you go out and do this test loosen that screw and you have no fuel draining out then you know for certain okay we have lost fuel that's why the engine died it wasn't it wasn't a spark issue it was the fact we ran out of fuel and a lot of times these old fuel pumps and that's you can see that's how much it got out these old electric fuel pumps will get intermittent on you They'll work for a while, run about 45 minutes, and just stop, let them cool off, and then they fire up again. So I'm going to try to completely remove this screw out and see, because it gets tricky. This it's kind of this is a small needle screw. That this that's the brass. That's what you that's what you see here. And I got to figure out a way. That's that's a little drain screw. Figure out a way to remove this plastic knob off while it's mounted to the carburetor and not break off that screw. It's kind of going to mess up your day because it, it could break off if you don't apply even pressure to remove it straight off. If you just try applying pressure on one side, it could push sideways enough to break off the stem because it's kind of a small threaded screw once it gets in there. So let me look around in my toolbox and see if I can find something. Well, my first attempt was a failure. I found this laying around. This goes on, uh, holds up, uh, oh, obviously, uh, uh, vertical blinds uh, in, a, in your kitchen sliding door type of thing. Really thin metal, spring steel. And at first I thought, well, I'll get under here, hook it, and apply pressure. Get the camera in the right spot. Apply pressure and pull it off. But it's, you know, I couldn't get equal pressure on both sides, and I was afraid I'm going to break off that screw. Because you can see it actually has some movement to it. Because it, you know, it's got a, it's a little jet screw, it's got an O-ring and a spring behind it. So that didn't work. So I said, okay, what else can I do? 
because I'm being the guinea pig here. We're learning, learning this together. So I thought, well, my, my problem, my, my problem is a rotation problem. What stopped me from rotating is little, little tabs. You got one over here and one on the other side. So I thought, well, if I could snap two tabs off, I could get rotation. So I'm going to try that now. So bear with me. I'm going to try this with one hand. I don't know how this is going to work out. Come on. I got me some curved needle nose. All right. Now if I can, I can snap that off. I don't know. Woohoo! Lucky there. Just like pulling the tooth. Alright, now I broke one off, but now it still stops. So it didn't solve my problem because I got one more to break off. So now if we can break that off, still doing this one handed, even with my left hand. Can you imagine that? Couldn't pick a better hand. Alright, let's see if I can break that off. Come on, camera, getting in the right spot. Aha! Uh -huh. Broke that one off. There. Let's see if I can turn it. There we go. Oh, perfect. One full turn. That's going to be the trick right there. Now, I do believe, now I don't think you can do that. Let's do another. Can we do this with the screw? No, we can't. So you have to pull that screw out to do this. So back here, that's, that, that's factory position right there. That's where it was in factory. So if you had a surgeon issue and you can't get it to stop surgeon, of course these curved needle nose makes it real nice. You can just snap those two little ears off and give it one full turn should be enough to richen your mixture enough. That's pretty much what I did to the um, that 2002 old man. And that should uh, take care of your, your, your problem. I'll try to start this up and maybe give a, a demonstration of it. Okay, so there's a, I've created a surging situation. So, and now we want to fix that. So, all I'm going to do is take the screw out. Cause I'm, hang on, let me pause this so I can catch this gas. Bag on it, hang on. Stop that. Alright, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the screw out and give this just one turn. And you'll notice the surging will go away. So let me just get that screw out and I'll be right back. Okay, so if you remember the position of the screw was over here, the adjustment screw. Now I've turned it around, now I've got it passed, so I'll go a little bit more. So it's going to create a little bit richer condition. Alright, I'm going to prime it back up because I lost some fuel out of the bowl. Here, pump up. Alright, let's give it a start and see if the surgeon has now gone away. that that works out pretty good so in a pinch at least you do have an option you can try backing that screw out one full turn get yourself a little bit more fuel and get and make the surgeon go away ideally you know take the carburetor, carburetor part and clean it they don't make carburetor kits for these things uh new carburetors are like 250 bucks i believe but uh as you can see in my other video uh, you can um you can take this all apart and and clean it yourself pretty well just just be careful be, and just follow the video video it's all you gotta do alrighty that's all I got thanks
Well, a couple days ago, I was make, made this video showing you how to break those ears off so you could uh, make this adjustable where you could rich in your mixture in case it was surging. Well, I got to think about it. I said, well, why not just make it where it's adjustable all the time, where I don't have to fool with a screw and all that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to remove this completely um, and how to put, to put, a, we'll put a little slot in it. So we'll actually be able to convert this from a nearly non-adjustable carburetor to a fully adjustable on-in carburetor. So, because all you need is get your little knock wheel cut and get your screwdriver here. Let's drain the fuel out of the bowl. Like I said, we normally get about an ounce out of that. Da -da 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 -da. Take the screw, I'm going to get my screw up and get that completely out. Be careful, don't lose it. Don't do this in the grass. If you're in the grass, lay a tarp all down. So if you drop something, you, you have a chance of finding it. Okay, so I got that out. All right, so now we should just be able to rotate this until it comes completely out. And I'll carefully get that plastic knob removed. Should be a spring and an o-ring and I felt it jump so be ready for it it just it jumps a little bit there she is yep so there's our spring a little o-ring so I'm gonna take it now to the garage and see if I get rid of the, get rid of this plastic cap and take me a Dremel tool and make me an adjustable jet out of it well now we're at the bench so here's the the jet we need to get that plastic cap off of it so I'm going to try a little bit different strategy on this because keep our spring out of the way. We want to protect this thing at all costs. We don't want to damage the threads. We don't want to damage the needle. So my thought process on that has got my little piece of a, this is just some weed eater fuel line, piece of vacuum hose, anything will work. I'm going to screw that down on the thread so that'll protect it. And then I'm going to put it in a socket. I'm going to put this bolt on it to make sure I can push it through and then stick it in this little vise and kind of use it just to press it out my, nice and slowly so I'm not beating and banging on it. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. All right, so here's my layout. I'm doing this one hand, one handed today. So I'll put this like this. I'll set this up in the vise and I'll push it through. So I'm gonna get that set up and I'll show you the process here. Okay, we're in the vise and well, I don't like that. We're a little sideways, aren't we? Let me, let me see what happens, though. Oh, yeah, it's going. Look how easy that is. It's probably going to fall. Will it stay put? Nope, it fell. All right, I see it, though. So there we go. We got, we got it out. Easy peasy. So now I'm going to carefully cut me a slot on that. So I can easily take a screwdriver to it and have me a fully adjustable carburetor. Well, let me show you something else. Let me get that hose off of it. I was just wanting to point out, you know, even my needle, you know, it's, it, look at that, it's pretty grody. So that's why sometimes over the years, as the fuel evaporates, evaporates away, it'll leave, leave behind a, a layer of varnish. And as that varnish builds up, the the spacing between the jet and the orifice gets smaller and smaller and you start running leaner and leaner and you start surging. So that's where it can be very handy to have the ability to open this up just a little bit to rich in the mixture slightly. So I will probably clean this needle up just a little bit. And there's different ways you can probably get this off. I was just being extra careful. You could probably take a Dremel tool and slice it off. But you got to be careful about prying on it because at this point... See where we got here. Where's my screwdriver going? So that's our weakest point. That's really narrow right there. So if you got applying very much pressure and got sideways, you can snap the screw off right, right there at the base and have it wedged up inside the carburetor. So that, that's something I uh, definitely wanted to avoid. Remember, we always ask ourselves, how many ways can this go wrong? And that's one way it can go wrong. So now let me uh, get me another piece of hose, protect this thing. Uh, and put it in the box or something other than slice me a, a slot in it for my screwdriver. 
Now for this process, I got my little piece of quarter inch hose to slide over here to protect it. And I'm going to put it in the vise, but I'm going to clamp on this gnarled edge, the, the bigger part. So I'll clamp it in here kind of snug. Then take my Dremel tool and carefully slice me a slot and I will have me an adjustable jet. There we go, ain't that pretty? Give it a test run. Screwdriver fits in there nice and snug. And you don't necessarily have to do, do this. I just like the ability to have a screwdriver so I can count my turns. It's kind of easier to keep up with, you know, if when you come out like, usually you come out about two, two and a half turns on, on startup on most of these. And then it's just a little bit easier to adjust instead of just trying to use your fingers and grab hold of that little gnarled edge. So while I had my screw out, you see it looks a little bit better. I took me some emery, pa emery cloth paper right here and uh, just kind of pinched it and then rotated the screw back and forth to clean it up just a little bit. It looks a little bit better. So I guess now we'll put this back on the carburetor and uh, do some carburetor adjusting. All right, here we go. Ready to put it back in and I dropped it. See what I mean about having a tarp, something handy. Because if you don't, don't do this stuff in the grass. And, okay, worst case scenario, say you did drop this thing and lost it in the grass. So now what are you going to do? Well, then I would go to Amazon, buy one of those cheap China carburetors, steal the jet out of it, and put it in your carb. You could do that. So, uh, anywhere. There's our new screw. Put the spring on it. Get it started. No problem. And now when you take this all the way in, you just want it snug. You don't want to damage the seat or the needle by, by getting it too tight. Just get it snug. Okay, then we'll back it out. The screwdriver here. There's one. Let's get about two turns on it. Then we'll start it and let it warm up and adjust it from there. Of course, we have to remember to put our drain screw back in. That won't be pretty if we leave that out and snug that up. Keeps the fuel from dripping. Of course, you know, about the purpose of this screw, if you are going to store your, if you have to leave it stored for a while and sitting, uh, you're better off to drain the fuel out of your bowl. Get, get it out of there. If it's going to be sitting for more than 60 or 90 days not being used, let the bulb be completely dry and out of fuel. If you leave the fuel in there, it will slowly evaporate, and that's when it leaves behind all the creeping crud, the varnish and all that stuff. So if you're going to be storing it, you know, for 90 days or so, just come out here, open it up, drain, drain the fuel out, you get about an ounce of fuel, and close it up, and you're done. Now when you go to restart, you have to hit your prime button you know, to fill the bowl back up. It only takes a few seconds. Well, I actually, I guess we're at that point, aren't we? So, because the bowl is empty, we'll hit prime. Can you hear it? Pumping up. You can hear it change tune, I guess, when it, when the flow slows down, once the bowl gets up. All right, let's see if we can get it start. Okay, so two turns must be pretty close. Now the next step is I'm going to get me an extension cord and run it over here so I can show you how to adjust the carburetor. You know, if you're a mechanic, you can just adjust the carburetor kind of by, by using your ear. You can tell when the RPMs drop, but uh, I'm going to use something else. So uh, if, if, you're, if you're kind of non-mechanical, you have a visual way of adjusting the carburetor and knowing uh, how to set it. All right, just so you know what I'm doing, I'm plugging the extension cord up to our outside receptacle here. So what I'm wanting to do, I want to measure the, the hertz of this engine as it's running. 
so I can use that as an RPM gauge, sort of. So I've got my cord here. I'm going to get two hands, get this thing set up. I'm going to give you a heads up of what I'm about to do because when I fire this up, you probably won't be able to hear me anyways. So I'm going to start up the engine, let it run for a good five minutes. I'm going to fully load it. I'm going to run, turn on both air conditioners because I want it under full load when I adjust the carburetor. And then you'll see me by taking a screwdriver and I'll be turned it in. I'll turn it in until the RPM start to drop or it may start to surge, but you'll, you'll also see the kilohertz will start dropping. I think mine's probably, and I think no load's about 61, 62 hertz. And, uh, but then I'll start backing the screw off. I'll probably give it a lot, like one full turn off uh, off of where it starts to lean out because we don't want to run lean because uh, your, your, your fuel has a, a cooling ability also. So if you run lean, you uh, you know, you don't want to damage your engine. Of course, you can tell when you start running lean, you get that crazy surging nonsense. So, um, so let me fire things up, let it warm up, and then I'll, I'll get to adjusting. Alright, it was noisy out there. So you may have noticed I was running 61 hertz um, with no load. So I'm going to turn on the loads here, and then we'll see what kind of difference we have. So I got fan high, air high, got that on. All right, let's go to the bedroom, kick it on. And on air, huh? So we'll see if the hertz drop down any being fully loaded. There it goes. Okay, so if you've seen what I was doing, I turned the screw in till it, you know, you have to kind of wait a minute for it to settle in, kind of don't do it real fast, and you'll notice it'll start to surge, the RPMs will start to drop, the hertz start to drop, and so I backed it up till it got steady and didn't surge anymore, then I give it one full turn after that. I think that would be, a, set us a good mixture. Um, it's not like some engines, some engines you can... You can like turn them in till the RPMs start to drop and turn them out till the RPMs start to drop. But this one doesn't seem to have that effect. But one one full turn off of the surging, I think will be, be a good mixture for us. Um, and th I didn't mention this kilowatt meter. That's something every RVer should have. They're very handy. You know, you should measure your voltage, your hertz, especially for these uh, on end engines. We need to keep the hertz right at 60 hertz. Because if you don't, if you have overspeeding, that can cause a shutdown. And I need to, I'm going to make a separate video on that, on how to, to adjust your, your hertz. So uh, anyway, I think we're about to wrap this project up. Okay, just to, to remind you, because I'm just used to carburetors. I assume everybody adjusts carburetors and they probably don't. So just, just remember, when you go clockwise with your screw, you're leaning out the mixture. You're shutting the fuel off. You're making it lean. When you go counterclockwise, you're making the mixture rich. 
So to give you an idea, you know, that's why we got the, this little gauge up here. If you go up to, to high altitude, there's less air. So if you have less air and you don't adjust your screw, you could have a rich condition. But you know, I've traveled around. I've never had to change it. I've never noticed a difference uh, on, on mine. But now it would be very easy to adjust because I've got that slotted screw. So, uh, but just to give you a little heads up of what that does. And also, say for instance, you, you plug up your, your kilowatt meter and you can get these at Harbor Freight, I think I mentioned before, or Amazon. Um, and you plug it up and you notice your hertz are high or low. Well, that adjustment is right here. It's on your 10 millimeter wrench, if you want to increase your RPMs, you you turn it clockwise, looking down from a, from above. Because your goal is, if, if you're running if you're running low hertz, low RPMs, you want to make that spring a little bit tighter. You want to stretch it more, so it's going to make it a little bit faster. But if you're running too fast, you're getting too many hertz, and you could get uh, engine shutdowns from that. If, you, if it runs too high, the engine will protect itself and protect your components. Then you need to do the opposite. You need to go counterclockwise on the nut and make the spring a little shorter, and that'll lower the RPM slightly. And, and I'll do a separate video on that. But I think we're about to wrap this up. I think that's about all I got to say about this on and carburetor. I know it's been a long video, but I thank you for watching, and have a great day. All right, I want to go into a little bit more detail of, of what we're trying to accomplish and what's happening inside the carburetor. So make, hopefully I can convey it. Of course, here's a fuel, fuel bowl, and there's that little adjustment knob. Remember, it only gives us a quarter turn. That's all we got. And if, you, if it doesn't help, it doesn't help. And we're trying to explain why it doesn't help. So here's a kind of a, a poor schematic. So, of course, here's a, the throat of a carburetor. And here's our fuel bowl. We have, of course, we have fuel laying in the bowl constantly, fuel pumps maintaining that level at all, all times through your float and through your needle valve. Well, that fuel, before it gets gets uh, metered and up into the throat of the carburetor and into the engine, all that fuel must pass this needle valve. If it doesn't get past that needle valve, it's not going to get in the engine. So over time, what happens when we let our RV sit for a couple of months, because this carburetor is vented to the atmosphere, it slowly evaporates. So the fuel will evaporate down to nothing and just disappear. But it disappears but it leaves behind a varnish and so that varnish will make every orifice slightly smaller so it's going to instead of having this somewhat large gap to allow fuel to flow through it's going to make it just a little bit more narrow now if you had a conventional carburetor we could actually adjust the screw an adjustable carburetor you could compensate for that by turning the screw out just a little bit more allowing more fuel to flow through and make up to the engine and keep make the surging go away but because we're limited with only a quarter inch turn, we can't do that. But with that little modification that I did, you can get around it and uh, hopefully make your surging go away, you know, and maybe even do it without taking the carburetor apart. That just depends on how dirty the carburetor is. Now, if you've got a whole bunch of crud in there, you know, this adjusting the screw out may or may not be enough in case you have some debris further up or down here in the bottom with all those other uh, little orifices are. So anyway, that's that, and I just want to show you a little bit about prices on these carburetors. Check it out. Let me get back here where I was at. Da 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 da. Here we go. Because you can see here, like here's one for the o the OEM carburetors are like four hundred bucks. Um, sell even Amazon three eight hundred eighty one dollars. Um, now you get you can get the China knockoffs for about fifty two dollars or so. But I have seen some poor re reviews. Where people were warning about them. They put them on there and they surge and give trouble. So, uh, and I did think it kind of funny. Remember when I was cleaning that, on that cleaning video I made, I was using tools like this to clean the jets and everything. So why on earth w would you need something like that shipped with a brand new carburetor? That was kind of a little bit confusing. Unless they figure you're going to have trouble with it and you're going to go in there and clean the jets out. Uh, anyway, I thought I'd just point those few things out and hopefully that's what will help you with your troubleshooting and repair. I also meant to mention um, the fact that these carburetors, they have no rebuild, rebuild kits available. The only individual parts they offer is the, the, the fuel solenoid at the bottom. Well, I think they call it anti, what do they call that thing? Anti, I used to see what they give a name for it. Too. They just call it fuel solenoid. All right. Some in the normal world, they sometimes they call them an after fire solenoid to keep them from popping when, they, when you shut the engines off and all that fuel goes in a big, big muffler. 
But all they offer is that solenoid and the complete carburetor. No, no internal parts, whatever. So, um, so when you take it apart, you know, be careful. Don't lose anything or you'll be buying a new carburetor. So I thought I'd mention that.